Hello everyone, good evening or hello, depending where you are. Just a quick check, can you hear me? Yes, all right, good. It's wonderful to see familiar faces and also new faces. And faces also I recognize from the first and second and third webinar. So great. Mm. My name is Eleni and today I will be hosting this webinar, but uh, I'm not alone here. I'm together with two of my colleagues, um, Bogdan and Ognian, and I will just to invite them to welcome you as well here. Hello and greetings from my side, greetings from Romania and Bogdan Romanica. I'm also one of the persons that are part of this uh, summit, the Moving Beyond Summit. And I'm really happy to be in our fourth and last webinar of the summit. I hope you will have a great time and great evening. And I uh, can't wait to, to start the whole process. Thank you and enjoy it. Welcome also from me, I'm Ognjan Gadularov. Welcome from Bulgaria, where I am now. And uh, I wish you meaningful and fruitful time with us tonight. And uh, I hope that these uh, four webinars will uh, leave a trace and uh, will give some ideas uh, for your future. Thank you very much for being with us today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, and let me just uh, share how um, already excited I am because you all, maybe already some, not maybe, but some of you already wrote in the chat, hello everyone, welcome everyone. And that made me really smile inside because uh, um, yeah, today's webinar is about the wisdom of the heart. So I can already see how you engage with this wisdom of the heart. But still we are in this uh, summit, which is called Moving Beyond, Becoming Fully Human in Times of Transformation. And we hope that today's webinar will add on the beautiful things that have been said on the previous three webinars so that we can um, move uh, beyond uh, the small story we live and transform, become fully human. All right. Before um, I go into the content and everything, I just want to uh, share a few guidelines like uh, uh, instructions, how to use this webinar and what to expect and how it's going to be. First of all, this webinar is being recorded. So you have this in mind that it is recorded. Um, second of all, um, we are in, the, in an online world and it's possible that um, at some moment uh, internet will give us some troubles. That's okay, whatever happens, we're just going to flow with it. Uh, whether it comes from your side or from our side, let's just trust that everything will be well and yeah, go with the flow. I also want to tell you that I'm not a native English speaker. So uh, you might hear errors or mistakes. And I hope that the theory that says that 93% of the uh, communication is a nonverbal communication, I hope this works now and that you understand and you get the message, although maybe some mistakes will happen. I see some of you smiling, which makes me even more happy. Fantastic. Uh, and here comes the first error, more happy instead of happier. See? Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I will... Um, I will be checking on you. I will be asking you to, to just see if you're following, if you're with us. So from time to time, if you have your camera on, um, yeah, you can nod or you can make thumbs up or thumbs down or uh, yeah, just use uh, also the um, uh, thumbs up that uh, if you have your camera off, you can still do it. Um, mm -hmm. And maybe a last thing that today's webinar, as I've said, is about the wisdom of the heart. That means that um, um, 
there will be a lot of emotions so they are nestled in our hearts maybe uh, less structure or less content um, and uh, at this moment i want to share with you what my intentions are for this webinar what do what do i intend to do and i have two intentions the first one is um, that um, my intention is to offer to you um, insights or inspiration or invitations or happily hopefully all three of them uh, that can help you um, step into the bigger story we are living and the second uh, intention is for us to have a good time as well to to um, say that this time is well spent um, that we are enjoying the time we spend together mm -hmm. um, so that's the intention of the guidelines and a uh, few things about me. So my name is Eleni Mikhail. I come from Cyprus. I live in Cyprus and I love Cyprus. And who am I really? I want to take you back in time. I want to take you back in time when I was a, a child. And my dream when I was a child was to become a magician. Um, because I wanted to bring uh, rabbits out of the hats and pigeons out of the hats. Um, so yeah, I was really fascinated by this magic, especially because I loved animals. I loved uh, being around animals. But soon after, you know, some uh, trials, I realized that I cannot bring rabbits out of uh, hats. Uh, so I was a little bit disappointed. Then came another, this is the, by the way, maybe you hear, this is the ice, ice cream man going through in the neighborhood. Yeah, um, but we take it as it is, yeah. So yeah, uh, another disappointment that I had is that actually magicians don't, don't do magic, you know, they, they have tricks, they, the things are there, the animals are there. So they are not really um, making, creating the magic. However, after working with people a lot of time, I realized that magic is hidden in a different place. That actually each one of us holds a magic stick and we, with this magic stick we hold, we can make magic and transform ourselves. And then I fell in love with this magic, this particular magic in way to witness people being transformed to witness be people uh, being in contact with their self their true self their deep self uh, with their inner wisdom with their inner voice and see this change and transformation happen and uh, i i yeah i dedicating my life uh personally and professionally to this kind of magic so what i'm doing professionally is that i hold spaces in which people can actually access their own wisdom their own essence their own voice inner voice soul and then bring this uh, in the surface and share it with the world and see their inner beauty i think the world is suffering a lot uh, with uh, by ignoring our inner beauty also outer beauty but especially the inner beauty so this is this is what i do this is what i'm dreaming of doing and this is done through experiential learning holding circles workshops meetings using elements of uh, uh, psychology like today positive psychology and a lot of arts and self-reflection. So today, although we are going to be in a webinar, um, the intention is to make it also more interactive than just me speaking and then and you. Are you with me on this one? Can you give me a sign? Yeah, great, okay. Um, so let's, uh, let's begin. <clears throat> I'm going to share my screen. Yes, and it's going here. Yes, and I'm going to do this, and uh, hopefully it will work. Tuck. So, oh, can you see the screen? Yes. All right. So today's webinar is about remembering the wisdom of the heart, 
exploring positive psychology. And I want to spend a couple of minutes uh, talking about remembering wisdom and heart. You see, when we speak about heart, uh, that's one of the four human dimensions. And that's, um, that's a concept that is hidden in nature and in many, many traditions. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, even, even religions. And there are four dimensions. And I, see, I guess you can see me also a little bit. Uh, there are four dimensions of human. And the first is the heart. So the emotions. The second is the body, the physical dimension. The third is the mind, the mental dimension. And the fourth is uh, the spirit, also soul and spiritual dimension. And all these four dimensions we hold inside of us. And today um, we are focusing on the heart, um, not because it's better than the other ones or more important, all of them are important. I just think that the heart is the uh, crossing point of all these four dimensions. Um, and uh, we are going to speak a little bit about it later on. Now I want to go back to the word wisdom. Wisdom is not knowledge, it's something deeper than knowledge. It's something about um, Mm, understanding deeply patterns, being able to see the big picture. And uh, wisdom is not learned, but it's uh, by books or by uh, webinars, but it is uh, accumulated uh, through all our experience and very, very close reflection, self-reflection and observations of our body, heart, um, mind and spirit. And a lot of wisdom is also uh, hidden in, uh, in nature. And that's why I chose this picture here. That's kind of a wisdom. And a lot of wisdom is also um, shared in, uh, in the old stories, in the songs, uh, in ancient things, ceremonies, rituals. And that's the wisdom of the heart, how, what is there in our heart uh, when we deeply listen to it. And then the word remembering, because um, we remember, it means that we are all, we are um, members of this, of this wisdom of the heart. And now we just need to become member of it again because maybe along the way we lost a little bit uh, the wisdom of the heart and today what we're doing is to remember rejoining the wisdom of the heart mm -hmm. yeah are you with it are, are you with me still yes great because i want you with me 100 percent. and i suggest to uh access this wisdom of the heart very, very practically as a first thing. And what I'm asking you to do is to lift your uh, right hand and then place it here um, on your chest, under your chest, right under, it's the heart. And um, with a cleansing breath, that means that we breathe in through the nose and we exhale through the mouth. We are closing our eyes and just being there with our heart under our hand. Our hand landed on our heart. And I invite you to bring your attention to the, your palm that is on your heart right now. And to feel your heart and listen to your heart. Follow the rhythm, the heartbeat. And if you cannot hear it or you cannot feel it, just imagine it. And imagine this great organ that keeps us alive beating without us actually knowing that it's there
giving life to all our cells, all our bones, all our existence. Giving us opportunities with every heartbeat, opportunities to grow, to become more authentic, to become more kind, more loving, more gorgeous, more soulful. And now imagine that under your hand, this heart is not only sending blood all over the body, but it is also sending vibrations. They are called electromagnetic waves in science. And these are love vibrations. So imagine that along with the blood that is flowing all over our bodies, love is being carried. Carried to all the cells, touching every corner, every bone, every muscle, every tissue, every neuron every organ filling is filling us in with love and just listen now listen to this love that is floating what is it telling you what are her wise words And once you have heard the words, you may allow your hand to rest back again on your knee and take again this cleansing breath, breathing in through the nose, breathing out through the mouth with a sigh, make a sound. And do it one more time if you wish. And slowly open your eyes and come back to here and now. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Thank you for embarking with me on this journey. Thank you for choosing to access the wisdom of the heart. And let's move on. Let's move on and see what we've got here today. Mm. All right. So the world we live in. And I wrote down a few questions about the world we live in. What are the news feeding us every day? Nowadays, but also in general. What are the news feeding us? And my understanding is that when you turn on the TV or you listen to the news, then you hear a lot about mm, painful things, um, a lot of uh, maybe deaths or injustice or wars or um, mm, corruption. Mm. And at the same time, how much of the reality do we really know? What, are, what part of the reality are the news telling us? Because my guessing is that we just know a little bit, only a piece of the truth. And a lot of things are hidden from us. We don't know what is happening in other parts of the world or even our own place. Mm. We have um, forced slower rhythm, but how is the rhythm? What is the rhythm of our, of our life? <clears throat> and I would think that we are living in a very fast paced world, a world in which we need to go through tasks fast, effectively. We need to deliver and deliver more. We need to, um, yeah. We need to produce and make sure we make everything before the deadline. 
such an irony, this word deadline, to make everything before the deadline. Because after deadline, there is death, no? After the line, there is death. <clears throat> well, there is not. Actually, maybe after the deadline, there is life. But we are going to see about it in a while. And then the fourth question, what dimensions is the modern world pushing us to use more? Is it the physical or the emotional or the mental or the spiritual? And in my understanding, I would say that there is a heavy, heavy demand on the mental dimension. Such a heavy demand that maybe the other dimensions are pushed uh, aside. And just to give you this, um, um, do we really understand how many images are imprinted in our mind just by scrolling on social, on social media? And how many information our brain, our mind has to process in order uh, yeah, to find peace among everything? So yeah, that's a little bit of the world we live in. And moving on with this, I would say that there is a humanitarian crisis. And you see that I have here two columns. And the first one, um, on one hand, I see people striving for basic needs. A part of the population is striving for the basic needs. Uh, people living in poverty, uh, people dying out of hunger, people, um, pushed and forced to leave their homes and their places because there their basic needs are not covered because it's not safe because they don't have a home or because yeah um, catastrophes have happened and wars and human trafficking that's something we don't speak so much but it is there and it's unbelievable how much money that's the modern slavery how much money uh, human trafficking business is making. Um, I read once that it's more uh, profitable than yeah, selling guns or drugs, human trafficking. Mm. And at the same time, in some, on some other hand or some other places, we have people striving for wellness because their basic needs are that are covered, but then we have consumerism and we have obesity and what, a, what an irony that people who are obese are more than the people who are starving. Um, and we have hatred and injustice and a lot of inner wars, um, a lot of stress, a lot of depression, a lot of loneliness. Mm. So there are two, there are two, yeah, extremes and a little bit of irony to have them ah, side by side. And um, then I have a question: How the ecological and the humanitarian crisis are connected? Because um, in the previous webinars we spoke about ecological or environmental crisis and how the climate is changing and how the species are being lost and and how um, the resources are um, undermined. And I see a great connection between both of them. On one hand, we have uh, environmental changes, climate changing, and people being forced to immigrate because, uh, because their mm, home because it is, is flooded and they have no more, yeah, the, the, the land is destroyed and they need to move. Uh, at the same time, these uh, immigrants are not necessarily accepted. There is hatred and injustice. But at the same time, you know, how, how uh, consumerism is, um, is pushing some people to stay in poverty because we are consuming and they are the ones who are going to produce it. Mm. At the same time, some kind of isolation from the place we belong, which is the nature, is giving us a lot of stress, a lot of uh, despair, a lot of disconnection 
with our in natural habitat. habitat. Hmm. So this is how I see ecological and humanitarian crisis being connected. Are you with me? Do you find, do you see this connection? Hmm? Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. Hmm. And here I will pause a little bit and I will um, stop sharing because I want to tell you uh, a story. Are you, now you can see me, right? Yeah, yes, 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 all right. Because I want to tell you a story. <clears throat> this is a story of a Greek mythology. Um, maybe you know about uh, goddess Demeter. She is the goddess of earth and of. Uh, um, yeah, home, our home earth, um, earth and agriculture. And it is said that goddess Demeter had a, a, a holy grove, that's a, a forest, an enchanted forest with trees. And in the middle of this forest was one sacred tree, which um, was her tree, her tree. And uh, around it, uh, priestesses were gathering to protect it and to honor it and make rituals for this goddess of, uh, of agriculture and of the earth. It is also said that one man called, and as I said, maybe I'm not pronouncing it very well, his name was Eris Keaton. Eris Keaton. Mm -hmm. So this man uh, was uh, greedy. And he wanted to cut all the trees of this sacred forest of the goddess and build there his palace. So he started cutting and cutting all the trees and he, until he went in the middle, the holy, the sacred tree. And there the priestesses and goddess herself tried to warn him not to harm this particular tree, this sacred tree of earth. But he did not listen. He disregarded um, her warnings. So he did cut the sacred tree. And then goddess Demeter cursed him, cursed him for an eternal hunger, an eternal hunger. And then this guy, he was so hungry that he went home and he started eating all the food that he had stored at home. And when the food was over, he started eating the animals he had. And when he ate all the sheep and cows, then he went out stealing from other people's food. And his hunger was unstoppable and unstoppable and he was so hungry that he even sold his daughter for food and he was so hungry still that he ate himself and died he even ate himself and died and why am i telling you this uh, meat now, why am I telling you the story of the Greek mythology? Because I, I see that somehow we, and when I say we, I'm not talking about uh, us necessarily, the 50 people who are here um, and the others who are listening, but we, I'm a, a part of this earth population has become greedy and we are unstoppably hungry and we're just eating one after the other. Because we think that this is the way uh, to get happiness. This is the way to access the heart. This is the way to be fulfilled. And by doing this mindlessly, we end up eating sacred things like the holy tree or like our families because we prioritize other things instead of our families or our connections. And we end up eating earth herself. One way or another, we can see how big factories of the things we buy are harming the earth. 
making the water uh, poisonous, but mm, or the air. Sooner or later, this air will get to us. We want to push it away to other continents. But yeah, making people suffer there, push them in poverty. But still, we live in the same place. And this is how maybe, maybe we are eating up ourselves. And I'm not saying this to worry you, but maybe to offer this story in a way that you can take whatever is good for you, whatever is calling you right now. And also to offer hope through these webinars in order to become fully human. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Move on. Yes. All right. Let's go back to this presentation. Which is here? Oh, actually here. All right. Mm -hmm. hmm. It's not moving. Why it's not moving? Mm. Wait a second. I will just do it one more time. Thank you for your patience. And thank you for your patience. All right. Yes. Okay. So we are all born to be happy. We're all born to be happy. This is our natural state of how we are meant to be. Mm -hmm. The trouble is that there are some misconceptions about happiness and we already spoke about some of them. And uh, another one is happiness equals with joy or being uplifted eternally the whole time, feeling woohoo the whole time. But happiness is not the same as joy. Uh, joy is a short feeling, uh, very um, raw, it comes and goes very quickly. But happiness is being grounded. Happiness is what is the summary of all that we live in. If we're looking only for joy, then we might end up not being very happy. Another misconception is that happiness comes after working hard or earning a lot of money. So I will be happy if I work harder, then I will be happy. Or if I get more money, if I get richer, then I can be happy. But that's another misconception because what we do is we push our happiness later on, later on, because actually there is no um, deadline for money or how much work we need to do and we get excited we finish one thing we want to do another thing so yeah happiness does not come after working hard or earning a lot of money another misconception is that happiness is about showing that we are better than the others if my neighbor has a, a car i want to buy a better car a faster car uh, if um, if the others are wearing this cloth, I want to wear this cloth, which is better, more fashionable, more um, mm, uh, glamorous in that way. I can be better than the others or more degrees than the others. Mm. But still happiness is not laying there. Sometimes we think that happiness is when we achieve a certain thing. So let's say I will finish university, then I will be happy. I will get married then I will be happy. I will have children, then I will be happy. Or my children will get married, then I will be happy. And this is obviously an endless way of pushing again happiness later on and later on um, and uh, out of ourselves. Another misconception is that happiness is a feeling and I'm putting it also here to create some confusion inside of us. Mm, because happiness is, is, a, is a summary of all our existence, all our feelings, all our experience, and what is left in the end of the day. What is left in the end of the day? What is left in the end of our life? Mm. And maybe one more misconception is that happiness is anywhere else except in us. Happiness is everywhere else, but not in us. It's in the 
food we're going to eat or in the degree we're going to do or in the other people, but it's not inside. But actually, happiness is inside. It's very much inside. Let me see what I have after this. Ah, I have a little exercise for you. Yeah, a little exercise to see how happiness is actually inside. And I want to invite you here <clears throat> to make a pause and uh, write. Think of the last 24 hours. Think of the last 24 hours um, and go through these 24 hours and write down in your journal what are the three things you are grateful for. What are the things, three things you are grateful for? And just take this one minute and write these three things you are grateful for. Once you finish the three things you're grateful for, what if you write one or two more and just push it a little bit more? What are you grateful for the last 24 hours? Mm, that's the bell ringing uh, to yeah invite us to come back here. I would be very curious to hear what you wrote in this list of things you are grateful for. Um, yeah, happiness is inside of us because we have the capacity to see things that we don't see with our everyday life, um, with our everyday eyes, with this fast rhythm of running and doing and delivering and going through life. But when we pause for a second and we think, what am I grateful for? Then I might end up saying, I'm grateful for my life, for my heart beating, for uh, having a home, a place, a safe place, for having food to eat. Yeah, and then we start thinking, yeah, I am actually happy because I have so many things, um, outer resources and inner resources. And um, at this moment, um, deepening more on how happiness in, is, is actually inside of us, I want to read a story uh, to you. I want to read a story to you. Are you listening to me? Is it okay? Yeah, okay, good. Um, so I'll just stop sharing to see your faces one more time. And I want to tell you, I want to read a story, another story um, about uh, how the creator of the world um, wanted to hide something from human. And here comes the story. Once upon a time, there was a creator. And he said, I want to hide something from humans until they are ready for it, until they are ready for it. It is the realization that they can create their own life. But I want to hide it until they are ready. Where should I hide it? The eagle said, well, give it to me. I will take it to the moon and hide it there. And creator said, mm -mm, no. One day, human will go on the moon and they will find it there. 
And then the salmon said, give it to me. I will bury it in the bottom of the ocean. But the creator said, mm, no, because one day human will also dive into the ocean and find it there. And Buffalo said, well, give it to me. I will bury it in the great plains under the earth. And the creator said, oh, one day they will cut the skin of the earth and they're even going to find it there. And then the grandmother, the grandmother who has no sight, but has a ah, vision from her heart, um, she sees with her spiritual eyes, said, well, what if you hide it inside themselves? And the creator hide it inside themselves, inside the human. And everything we look for, or most of the things we look for, apart from the basic needs, are inside of us but we neglect to see them. And how ironic it is that they are so close, but we look anywhere else to find it. Mm. Mm. So let's see, let's see how, how can we mm, unearth from our bodies and our hearts, this wisdom, this happiness, authentic happiness, realization of our lives become who we are meant to be okay going back to this one Ta -da. i guess you can see i hope you can see okay all right and that brings us to positive psychology. What is positive psychology? It is the study of the conditions and processes that contribute to the flourishing of optimal functioning of people, groups, and institutions. In other words, positive psychology is aiming to see what makes us truly happy and what makes us flourish. Not just be well, um, not just be neutral, um, take away the diseases, take away um, the um, pain, painful parts, um, take away the depression or take away uh, the anxiety, but really what makes us flourish and thrive and fulfilled. And positive psychology is a, is a new field of psychology that uh, uh, derived 20 years ago, especially after um, yeah, World War II, because um, after that, uh, since that definitely uh, the psychology was focusing more on fixing the problems and now we're not just want to fix the problem or solve the problem, but how can we make people thrive? So that's the shift. Hmm. And uh, the father of uh, positive psychology, he, he is called Martin Seligman. Uh, in the beginning of his uh, uh, career in positive psychology, he introduced this model, three types of happiness. And you see that there is a little bit of chart. We have happiness on one axis and time on the other axis. And then we have three types. And there are types. It doesn't mean it's not levels, but there are different tastes. So in the first one, we have pleasure. First type is pleasure. And that's ourselves being the rock star and chasing the next high. What does it actually mean? It means that when we are, um, when we are looking for happiness uh, as a pleasure, we're looking for something that is going to please us, which is going to make us feel um, uplifted as i said before you know this misconception and this is uh, uh, maybe in this uh, type of happiness we have things like um, mm, eating chocolate eating ice cream since we heard the uh, ice cream man a little bit earlier so yeah i want an ice cream it gives me pleasure i want a chocolate it gives me pleasure i want mm, alcohol it does give me pleasure i want drugs or i want a faster car or um, a fancier um, makeup or whatever 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 falls into this pleasure category you see that the time we enjoy it is short and the level of happiness is also little that's because 
yeah, after we eat one chocolate, the effect is already gone. We're looking for another chocolate to sustain uh, the pleasure. And that's how we end up with consumerism um, and greediness because we are not never satisfied. It's there, it's endless if we are trapped in this uh, pleasure type of happiness. Moving on, we have uh, the passion. Uh, passion is about flow and engagement. That's the second type of happiness. And there, when we find ourselves in passion, uh, in flow and engagement, time flies. So these are the activities we do and time stops, you know, it flies, it's like very quickly it goes, uh, it passes by. And maybe for you, it is when you are learning, if you feel time is passing now, or when you're teaching, or when you are being with friends, or when you are singing, or playing music, or being in nature, or writing, or uh, serving and making coffee for other people. Mm -hmm. uh, passion longer time uh, more amount of happiness and third type of happiness is higher purpose and meaning and it's about being part of something bigger than ourselves it is about um i would say that it's about using these passions that we spoke about before for something beyond ourselves maybe if I am a good listener and I'm passionate uh, in listening and speaking, maybe my higher purpose is to listen to the ones who are not heard by someone else or ask the questions that are going uh, to deepen their life. Mm. Or maybe I want to offer something uh, to the animals or the nature or the poetry or the soul or the spirit. So we offer something mm, beyond to someone beyond ourselves, a being or spirit beyond ourselves. That's a higher meaning. And you see how this um, this type of happiness is longing, is, is is taking more time, is lasting for more time, and also is giving us higher levels of happiness. At the same time, what Seligman discovered is that actually these um, um, the, the combination of the three is even better. So we do need to find our passions and uh, engage into them and be in flow. We, yes, we, it's great to offer them to something beyond ourselves and find meaning, but at the same time, it is necessary to take care of ourselves, to eat a nice meal, uh, to, yeah, have a beer from time to time uh, and, yeah, and enjoy the pleasures, uh, but pleasures not being the ultimate happiness. So the combinations of the three. And there is a little bit of a star under, uh, you might see that this model is applicable for human whose basic needs are covered. So we're, we're not expecting um, anyone who is in war or in violence or in a, a un, a unsafe place, who is hungry, who is, mm, poor to uh, go through this so once basic needs are covered then we can speak about happiness um, and now when i say basic needs i mean basic needs it doesn't mean that we eat sushi every day but we have something to eat we have somewhere to uh, a shelter over our head uh, basic safety and so on moving on um, there is there is then um, a more um, upgraded version of uh, what makes us happy, uh, and uh, here is the um, a new model which is called PERMA, and it's about positive emotions, engagement, relationships, positive relationships, of course, meaning accomplishment and achievement. And because uh, I believe that yeah, I believe that knowledge is and information are already on the websites i will focus more on yeah um, maybe bringing a bit more inspiration so here we go positive emotions as we said positive emotions are not so present maybe in our life or mm, if you listen to the news there uh, definitely you don't get a lot of positive emotions 
um, these are the top 10 positive emotions we experience and um, you can just go through them joy gratitude serenity interest hope pride amusement inspiration awe, and of course love it is said that love is the one we experience mostly and uh, awe is the one that we experience less this is what research is telling us and uh, the research about positive emotions uh, um, yeah, it is called uh, Borodin and Bill Theory uh, by Barbara Fredrickson. And what uh, this theory suggests is that positive emotions widen the array of thoughts, broaden and increase our resources, thoughts and actions. And specifically, positive emotions can support the development of competences, networks, and capacities, which in result facilitate well being and fulfillment. What do we mean by this? By engaging in positive emotions, we actually broaden our resources, our inner and outer resources. Now, imagine if you express gratitude to someone, yeah? or someone expresses gratitude to you. Expressing gratitude is, is a way, this feeling of gratitude is, 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 a, is a way of um, strengthening our bonds with this person. And therefore, we build relationships and that's an outer resource. Mm. Uh, or let's say, for example, inspiration. By being inspired, bringing inspiration, bringing inspiration into our lives, we are engaging this uh, force. We are awakening this inner force to do more things, uh, to have this motivation to embark on new things that we always wanted to do. And that's just a few examples of how positive emotions broaden and build our capacities so that when we are uh, in a difficult uh, situation, we can actually stand on our feet and have resiliency. Another important thing here is to know that there are no, positive, no, no negative emotions. Uh, positive psychology names... Uh, the emotions positive emotions but the other part is not negative but uh, actually they call them painful emotions because they are maybe unpleasant the ones we don't want to uh, we don't enjoy so much being there but painful emotions are crucial for our growth because they are actually the ones who are forcing which are force, forcing us to change to make transformation and remember yesterday i see you nodding and i'm grateful for that i remember yesterday when we spoke about leaving home and going um, um in stage four in the leaving the tribe leaving the, the place we have built and yeah, going in, in our soul, that's not a pleasant moment. That's a, a very um, unpleasant or dark moment. But there we get great treasures. We get great treasures and life transformation from uh, painful emotions because each emotion is coming there with a message. The emotions are coming to us with a message uh, to tell us, well, this is what you need to do. And that's the wisdom of the heart. That's the wisdom of the heart that each Emotion is here to tell us something. So mm, a question now being in the realm of positive psychology is how can I add more positive emotions in my life? Having this, how can I add more positive emotions in my life? We are moving on. So the second part of PERMA model is engagement. And we spoke a little bit before about engagement in the second type of happiness. And that's the part of us being lost in an activity. And I chose to put the, uh, the dancer here because I believe, well, I want to believe that no dancer is uh, dancing because of money uh, or because of a successful career, but because they are really being one with the music, time is stopping and they lose themselves in this absorbing activity um, which is also called flow mm -hmm. uh, and we are all having things that are 
making us uh, feel flow and being engaged. And here comes the question, what are your unique gifts that bring you in a state of engagement and flow? What is bringing you in, in, in flow? And that's a gift, that's a gift to be able uh, to be in flow. Yeah, this activity, this passion, this uh, charisma is a gift and it's something for you uh, yeah, to experience experience more for us, but it's also something that we can offer to others. It's good to dance alone, but it's also good to dance for the others in order to awaken their, uh, yeah, awaken some things hidden inside of them. So that's the second one, engagement and moving on, relationships. So we human are social being, beings. We are born to be in tribes. We are born to be uh, in communities. And um, sometimes it is good um, to spend a little bit of time alone. In English, there is a great um, um, yeah, word which uh, surprisingly I forget. Uh, solitude is the word. Sometimes we need to be solitude in solitude to make this inner reflection. Um, but that's one part of our life, a small, very small part or a small part of the day. But we, um, yeah, solitude is different than loneliness um, because loneliness hurts because we are born to be in relationships. And actually we're looking for relationships um, in which we are loved and we are supported and acknowledged and respected and valued and heard and seen and all these beautiful things. This is actually a relationship. It's not just surviving, but it's about deeply being held uh, wholeheartedly. If we recall moments during which we felt excluded or rejected, we can better understand the emotional pain that is associated with the lack of meaningful relationships with peers or the community. Scientists also say that this isolation, this loneliness, triggers the exact same neurons as the physical pain. So the same way we are physically hurt, the same way we are hurt um, when we are lonely, not when we are in solitude, because that's our decision, but when we are left alone, uh, left aside. And the question is, how can I deepen my relationships? How can I deepen? How can I love more? How can I support others? How can I respect more? How can I value more? How can I listen deeper? How can I speak from the heart? That's a question for you to take in. We are answering all the questions later on through some practices. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I speak too much. Are you with me? Is it? I hope it's not boring. I no. Okay. Whew. Because uh, yeah, it's good to mm -hmm. hear you from time to time, just to see you. So next, moving on, we have meaning. So meaning is about having a sense, um, uh, to have a sense of meaning means we need to feel that what we do is valuable and worthwhile. This involves belonging to and or serving something that we believe is greater than ourselves, as we said earlier. Meaning is what keeps us alive. There's a lot of research on that. If we have meaning in our life, if our life is meaningful, if what we do is worthwhile, valuable to someone, then that gives us a reason to stay in life. In other cases, people who are um, committing suicide or considering to commit suicide, that's because they miss meaning um, or also, mm, they just surrender to life and life is, they, they give up, they give up, whether it's committing suicide or just allowing death to come. So meaning is what pushes us forward. And remember, it's about doing something for something beyond ourselves, another person, another being, the whole earth. 
what is giving you meaning? That's a question to think. What is actually giving me meaning? When? What activities or what um, parts of the day are meaningful to me? And moving on, accomplishment, that's the uh, last part of the PERMA model. This element offers a sense of fulfillment as we reach our goals and become better throughout time and achieve mastery. So yeah, we have all the others, but from time to time, it's good to acknowledge what we have accomplished in life, that we are evolving, that we are becoming better, and that we do want to become even more better, even uh, more rich in the wisdom, not rich in the sense of money. So the question is, how do I become better? How do I become better? Or how have I become better uh, since last year or two years or 20 years ago? Hmm. And another concept that I want to talk about is mindfulness. Um, and mindfulness is the skill of living in the present moment. And it's, uh, again, is um, yeah, something that maybe is very neglected nowadays, also because we are far away from nature. We spend a lot of time thinking about the past or thinking about the future, being trapped in a small story and forgetting to see the big picture of life or earth. Um, so here is how mindfulness can look like. And the question is, do you want to be mindful or mindful? Scientists say that we spend 45%, 47% of our time awake, mind wandering. That's the photo with the complicated thoughts in the, mm -hmm, in the little cloud. Mind wandering, this is when our thoughts when our mind is wandering, is moving around different things. Our body is always in the present moment. You know, when we want to go to toilet, we want to go to toilet. Or when we're hungry, we know we're hungry. Our body is always here, but our mind is wandering. And almost, if you think that we are mind wandering almost 50% of the time, that means that half of our life, we are not really living the here and now, we're not living really this life. Hmm. And what are we, yeah, so going back to the uh, mindfulness, what are these three dimensions of mindfulness and how can we engage in them? So they are three and they are integral. So we want all three of them. The first one is about observing what happens inside of us. So our body sensations, um, our senses, what we smell, what we see, what we hear, our feelings, what is in our heart right now, our thoughts to keep trace, keep track of our thoughts. And I would go also a bit beyond that, like observing what happens inside of us means also answering mm, some questions like, who am I? What are my values? What are my competences? What are my gifts? Why am I here? The second dimension is observing what happens around us. So what and who surrounds us and where we are. So now I'm in this room, in this webinar, in this city, with these people around and ice cream man going around the neighborhood. But also, um, um, yeah, to see how are the others today? Are they angry? Are they uh, joyful? How do they respond to me? But also deepening a little bit this observation of what happens around us. What happens in the world beyond this room, beyond this city, beyond this country, or beyond this continent? What is actually happening in Africa right now, or in Asia right now, or in America right now, or maybe we have people from all these continents and I don't know, I welcome you to, 
But what is happening in Antarctica now that the ice are melting or are, yeah, Arctic? Mm. And the mm, third dimension is not judging what happens inside or outside, engaging in a non judgmental behavior, accepting what is happening. And we accept because we cannot change what has already happened because this present moment, the moment we live now, is, is a result of what has happened before. It's not the result of now. So we need to accept it and also take the responsibility. So it goes hand by hand. Uh, we don't accept in the sense of surrender and that's the reality. This is the world now, starvation and wars and climate change and uh, oh there is nothing i can do i surrender but rather than taking responsibility of what uh, i can do um, or how can i see the world or what is my contribution right here right now a lot of times it's also about the perspective we look at we look at things some other times it's more about engaging in uh, other activities Hmm. Are you with me still? Yeah? All right. Hmm. Just a little bit more. Why being mindful? Hmm. Why being mindful? Well, the treasures that are hidden inside of us from the Creator are in the here and now. We cannot find them in the past and we cannot find them in the future. We cannot find them anywhere else apart of us. So being mindful is, is a way of being happy with our life, is a, way, is a way of recognizing, acknowledging ourselves, is a way of taking responsibility. It's a way of taking opportunities and really fully living. That's why mindfulness is important. Hmm. And we need mindfulness to push this great turning hmm. that we spoke about on the first webinar. We are born to be happy. We are born to be mindful, sorry. So we can reclaim it. Children are always mindful. They're always in the present moment. So this is a skill we are born with, we lose it over time, but we can engage again with it. And another, very shortly, uh, another thing that I want to tackle is the character strengths. That's also another element of uh, positive psychology, character strengths and virtues. It is mostly, this concept is mostly developed um, for, um, for the educational system, how to bring um, positive education. But I find it very meaningful in, in just having these character strengths throughout life. And here they are clustered in these categories. And I give you a little bit of uh, silence to just look at them. In the meantime, I will drink a little bit of water. So wisdom and knowledge, humanity, justice, temperance, transcendence, and courage. And uh, my uh, guessing is that when we work with these character strengths that we all possess, then we will not have these things, this humanitarian crisis we spoke about in the beginning. When we have kindness, when we have honesty, when we have humility, when we have perspective, when we have fairness and teamwork and forgiveness and humor in life, I think there's a lot of healing coming up. 
Mm. And now I'm just moving to some practices of how can we actually put the character strengths and the perma and mindfulness in practice. And here's what, here's what we can do more practically. So expressing gratitude to others, saying thank you, writing thank you letters to others, meditating, praying, or being in stillness, or just breathing, it also works. Journaling on things we are grateful for, like we did today earlier, doing acts of kindness. Um, and I would add doing acts of kindness secretly. So to strangers, offer them something, a kind gesture that they don't know and they don't expect. Uh, writing a letter of self-compassion to ourselves. Say, wow, I understand. I feel your painful emotions. I know the situation you are in. Yeah, offering this self-compassion to ourselves. Acknowledging the resources we are having also. You can do it. You have accomplished so much already. You have this and that in a resource. Spending time in nature as well as spending time with humans in meaningful encounters. Enlarging our comfort zone, doing something new, something we always wanted, but we haven't tried. Starting with small steps and enlarging our comfort zone. Investing time in, what, in that thing that puts us in flow, whether it is singing or whether it is Mm, cooking or whether it is planting or whether it is mm, reading just spend more time with that thing engaging in arts and I know that we have a lot of inner critics about arts but we are born to sing we are born to dance we are born to draw we are born to act we are born for all these things and I would say as a last it's not a practice but Every time we have a decision to choose the authentic happiness, what makes us truly, deeply hearty, uh, happy. And I say that remembering the wisdom of the heart will heal the human and the earth. And that's where this presentation is over and I'm looking forward to see your faces and hear your questions mm. oh it took a lot of time good we didn't we didn't lose too many people on the way <laughs> yeah yeah thank you so much eleni for your beautiful presentation for the really inspiring and touching stories and the exercises that you offer to us to really experience in this very moment some positive emotions and to uh, experience happiness. Uh, I have uh, gathered a couple of questions and uh, uh, in this moment I'm also inviting uh, the others uh, who have questions, please write them in, in the chat because um, we will have a couple of minutes to do this. and. I uh, want to ask you, Eleni, a question that came. If you could tell us one more time what is positive psychology in your own words. Mm. So, mm -hmm. yeah, one more time. So I would say that positive psychology is a science field which actually um, proves what we already know. We, our, all the ancient traditions, all the ancient tribes, even our grandmothers and fathers and mothers and our children know that we need to be kind, we need to be happy, we need to be grateful. What positive psychology does is just to back up everything with data and research and say, yes, when you say 
uh, I'm grateful for, tra -la -la, tra -la -la, tra -la -la, then this is the amount of which um, we expand our happiness. So it's a, it's, uh, this is another definition that I just gave you. Uh, well, the old definition would be, yeah, it's the science of positive emotions and what makes us truly happy as human beings and truly flourish and thrive. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you so much, Eleni. I just want to uh, mention one more thing that it's uh, three of us who are in a way supporting uh, this process. So also Ognan, if you feel like adding at one point something, including myself, um, yeah, it's, it's a good reminder. So I don't know, Ogi, if you want to say something. Okay. Uh, then there is one more question that came from uh, from the chat. And then uh, I have a question for you, Eleni. Uh -huh. It came to my mind. So um, someone said that I love this model. I see a deep complexity in it. The first thing that came to my mind was, is it somehow connected with... Uh, the permaculture conception concept. Uh, mm. The permaculture mm. concept. That's a great question. I want to admit that I am not. Uh, um, I'm not uh, uh, very familiar. I mean, I know what it is, but I haven't delved into permaculture. But the way I know permaculture is to use the ecosystem. Uh, in order for what you want to do to thrive. And I would see that this applies also in this PERMA model, that we're using the ecosystem, uh, we're using our resources that are other human and ourselves in order for us to thrive. Looking at it from this perspective, I would say that this is the similarity that I find. At the same time, I am, I'm just underlining that I haven't delved into that yet. Hmm. Or maybe Ogi or Bogdan, maybe you know more about this. Well, what I can say is that I'm um, working with human permaculture <laughs> and not so much with uh, ecological and land and plant permaculture, but I believe that permaculture is based on universal principles on how to live in harmony with the uh, earth, with nature, with our inner nature. So I believe that in a way, uh, what we have um, presented in all these webinars is in a way, or are in a way, universal principles and values. Yeah. Okay. Good, I see that Ogi is not jumping in, so I assume that I can move on with another question. Uh, someone asked, can you recommend us a book that deepens our knowledge on positive psychology? Mm. Yes and no. Uh, we are going to uh, give to you uh, a set of resources after this and in these resources uh, we can uh, include some books which you can uh, delve into and read more about about happiness and about yeah a lot of things are actually um, more accessible through articles and if you are interested about the concepts you are going to find easily a lot of things um, about them on the websites, on just the internet. Um, more books uh, we are going to write you uh, in the, mm -hmm, in the mm, email that is going to follow up later. All right, so I see more and more questions coming. Uh, and uh, the next one can be, what can a person who is observing a negative thought uh, do? In that moment so when a negative uh, thought is coming what a person can can do self-compassion i would say self-compassion because we are going to have uh, negative thoughts 
I mean, let's not undermine, uh, under estimate our mind. Our mind is here to help us uh, go through dangers. And we are going to think about the dangers. Um, and we need to think about them in order to survive. No, that's evolution. Uh, progress is uh, being there and seeing where do these uh, thoughts come from? What are these uh, thoughts telling me? What, where are they pushing me to go? Is it feeding my soul or is it staying in the small story I am? Yeah, but being there, the first step is to, to treat ourselves as our best friends. If our best friend had a negative thought and was in big trouble, what would we do? The first thing is to listen and ask what is happening. And you can do it and have a dialogue with yourself or write this dialogue with yourself. And then after you have done the listening, then um, you will find a way out and see how you can support um, yourself in that moment. Okay, I will just take one more question. Um, what are your thoughts about happiness being a consequence from a mindful and meaningful life and not the main goal in life? Mm. Mm. Well, uh, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of things to be said about uh, happiness. Um, uh, one of which, which I didn't mention so far, but you are mentioning and it's great, is that actually happiness should not be our primary goal and uh, anxiously looking for happiness. Uh, this is not how things uh, should be. This actually makes us less happy. This is what it is said. Um, and I, I, I might say why. And the answer is that, mm, well, we don't, it's not possible to measure happiness. Um, it's not possible to measure it and um, then we don't know we'll just keep looking and keep looking when we shift our um, definition of mindfulness as a uh, meaning uh, offering being in the, in a state of flow and offering uh, then this measure would be I want to be more in a state of flow and more and offer more of my state of flow to the others uh, and, 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 and just grasp into that meaning and never leave it. So when uh, we look at it from this perspective, then we are having happiness all along. And remember, happiness is not about being uplifted the whole time, but really embracing all the emotions that are coming and going through life um, and saying, well, today I'm grateful because this happened. Today I had a bad day. And it's okay because I have hope for tomorrow. Today, I'm taking the responsibility of the next uh, day. So yeah, again, mindfulness is not necessarily an emotion, but it's a state of being. I hope I answered the question. Yeah. Uh, I see that we are slowly approaching the end of the webinar and I will uh, take one more question from those in the chat and then quickly I will uh, ask my question. Uh, so the question from the chat is how can we keep these practices that you uh, spoke about, how can we keep them interesting for our mind? How can we keep them interesting for our mind? Interesting for our mind, yeah. Well, doing one thing every day that is uh, out of your comfort zone keeps us our mind very interesting. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, it's good to engage the mind in whatever we do. Um, but also remember that we have these four dimensions and that we need also to engage our body and our heart and our spirit and soul. Um, so how can we do it? Mm, I don't know. You need to find the answer yourself. Make, uh, give yourself new tasks. Today, can I be grateful of uh, three things and tomorrow about four things and the day after about five things? Maybe this is a way <laughs> if you want to give your mind this kind of uh, um, treats. That's one way. 
but I would remind that we are also needing, we need to engage all dimensions and the heart and the body and the spirit. Mm. All right, and my last question that is coming from my side is, it was not planned, so I hope you're okay with this. Um, what is your favorite practice that you do to put you in a state in which you can experience happiness? Hmm. Hmm. What I um, find myself very much loving and um, hmm, being in that state is when, um, when I'm listening to music and especially when I am singing, I find this um, uh, really tuning into something that is in a flow inside and is yeah giving me tuning into my happiness that is definitely one practice and the other one is just being outside in the nature that's another beautiful thing oh my god now i remember another thing oh, i can't choose bogdan there are too many things that i'm doing yeah to really say i love you to people and to love myself and say this to myself and self-compassion. I have done it before this webinar. I told myself, Eleni, it's, a, it's okay. It's a new thing. You are going to do it. I understand why you're scared. Ooh. Thank you for listening to that. Okay, so that was the last question. And maybe before, um, yeah, many more questions. You can write us emails with questions later. Um, I want to close this webinar with a poem and then i will just give the word to my colleagues uh, so to conclude uh, this uh, moving beyond summit if you feel like you can close your eyes let this song uh, let this poem um, speak to you it goes like this um, well it, uh, the title actually is our deepest fear and the poet is Marianne Williamson. And it goes like this. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is in within us. It is not just in some of us, it is in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Hmm. So that is the poem. Mm. You are born to shine. And yeah, I just want to thank you so, so much for being here today, especially in this webinar, as well as for being uh, maybe also in the previous webinars. Mm. It was lovely to be with you. And I just want to yeah, invite my colleagues because now I'm a bit more emotional. So you guys can step in and then I can just say a final thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Lady. I would like to uh, start first and uh, to express my 
deep gratitude and uh, yeah, my my love and connection to everything that uh, that happened in this week. And I want to share how happy I am about uh, these uh, four webinars, these summits that uh, we we prepared and realized together. And uh, I want to I want to express how how grateful I am to to have such colleagues and such friends like you and uh, Bogdan and to uh, to to really to to wish all of you our our audience today and previous days to to be able to work and share in such environment of people who are like minded with you and to share same values and. Uh, same purpose in life and uh, i wish you all to shine and to live your biggest life in service to the earth and to the future generations thank you very much thank you so much ogi for your words and I can just repeat what Ogi said. It's a really great pleasure and honor. And in a way, I feel that I belong to a community that uh, I see here in front of my screen. And uh, it's so great to see you, even though, you know, maybe some of you I never met, but I feel that we are friends in a way. And with those that I know, I feel that it strengthens our connection. So it's a great great time so thank you for being here uh, friday evening uh, saturday evening you know you gave your time just to be here um, and yeah my last words are um, just to tell you that uh, more things will come and we will put these recordings online and uh, yeah my invitation and our invitation is just to pay forward uh, these webinars and these uh, resources that we will send and uh, let's meet again and let's continue this journey, the journey of making uh, the world a better place. Thank you so much again, Ogi and Eleni. It was a great journey and I hope to journey even more in the future together. Thank you. Mm, yeah. Oh my God, I also want to thank you. Um, something that I... Um, too many emotions, you know. Uh, gratitude, happiness, flow, awe, beauty, um, hope, because you are here. And thank you on behalf of Earth that you are here, um, on behalf of uh, our ancestors, on behalf of our unborn children. It was uh, really an honor to have you with us in this uh, today or the other days. And with you, there is hope uh, for this world. And yeah, I know my colleagues are, I'm always surprising them, but there is something that wants to be said, one more thing. So the ones who feel like staying a few more seconds, few more minutes, because I do these tricks, you know, I wanted to become a magician and choo, 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 I change things. Um, yeah, just I want to uh, invite us for a song. And uh, it's a song, a, a very old song, very, very old song about calling on the wisdom of uh, the elders. So we step um, into the shoes of our, the elders, uh, ourselves elders, the wise part, the wisdom of the heart. And let's sing this song together two, three times. I will say it, and then you can just repeat after me. Um, I'll, it goes like this. And don't think about, I don't have a good voice. We're not singing now to perform. We're singing for something beyond ourselves. And the song goes like this. Um, yeah, it goes like this. Pura samene, pura samene, pura samene o, pura samene o. What you can do is you can simply 
repeat after me. So I will say, Buddha Samen, and you say, Buddha Samen, so you don't mix up with the words or just hum and just vibrate it the way you want. It's a praise to the ancestors and calling, uh, calling the elders to step into their shoes and become elders and take this responsibility and join the wisdom of the heart. If you want, you can close your eyes. If you want, you can keep it open. It goes like this. Pura Samane 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 Pura samene o, 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 So thank you so much, everyone.